Hi gang, so this morning I am doing a SEMA breath test. This is going to be a little bit of an instructional video and that way you have a concise, you know, uh, A to Z kind of guide for what you need to do. So the first things first is take out all of the instructions, look through. I am using a kit from Aerodiagnostics, by the way. This is the company that I recommend, whether you're doing glucose or lactulose, I think they're a great company. Um, so first off, they include a couple of pieces of paper that you'll want to look through and read before you get started. So for the prep, this is very important. You basically have a 24 hour window where you need to do some manner of dietary prep. And here's what I ended up doing and here's what they also recommend you could do. Normally what's in the instructions is they say that for the first 12 hours, so the first portion of the day, the day prior to your test, you could do a prep diet. And it is the most boring thing probably on planet Earth. You could do baked or broiled chicken, fish, or turkey with salt and pepper only. Nothing else. No oil, no nothing. Plain steamed white rice, white bread, clear chicken or beef broth, or eggs. Again, no oil, no nothing, just salt and pepper. Uh, and then for the second 12 hours, so say you wake up, so like I'm doing this on a Monday morning. So for example, Sunday morning, I could wake up seven, eight, nine o'clock, whatever it might be. And I could eat eggs, chicken, white rice, white bread, whatever for 12 hours. So let's say, you know, seven to seven, and then wrapping up the eating portion of the day with another, you know, boring dinner, whatever is on this list. And then after dinner, the clock starts ticking and you have 12 hours that you need to fast. So for example, I finished dinner right around seven o'clock last night. It is now nine o'clock. So I'm well beyond the 12 hours that I needed to do an actual fast. Um, for those of us who have some experience with fasting, what you can also do, and I've asked the owner of Aerodiagnostics when I was doing a consult with him not that long ago, I asked him, hey, is it okay if I just fast for 24 hours instead of doing the boring old diet for 12 hours? And he said, yeah, that's totally fine. So yesterday I did that. I did a fast with the intent of just not eating at all yesterday. And I found that I got a bit headachey. Um, it, I'm recording this during the COVID-19 pandemic actually. And I think it's just the stress and my adrenals are fried. I wasn't able to do the full fast. So I broke my fast with some plain hard boiled eggs, but I ate those right around 7 PM. And now I have fasted, totally fasted for 12 hours. Another kind of trick that they don't necessarily make as clear for you is that you really don't want to feed your microbiome anything for the 24 hours. And that includes xylitol and toothpaste. So they actually recommend that you don't brush your teeth the morning of the test. And that's important. I've seen elevated baseline gases rushes their teeth that morning. So keep that in mind. Also, I also kind of gross, but I chose not to brush my teeth last night because I figured maybe that would be part of the fasting period. I don't know. I figured better safe than sorry. And I didn't brush my teeth last night or this morning. So I'm feeling a little bit yuck. Uh, if you have like a tongue scraper or a water flosser or a brand new toothbrush that doesn't have any toothpaste residue, you can brush with just water but just make sure that there's no toothpaste residue on that toothbrush because again, it'll a, a teeny teeny bit can get swallowed and then that will feed your microbiome and potentially feed the SIBO and give you elevated gases. So you do want to be careful of that. Then they make a point. There's kind of a one hour magic window. So for example, I woke up around eight o'clock today, just kind of rolled out of bed, brushed my hair, came here. Um, and now it's nine o'clock. So now I'm well within the span of time where I can do this breath collection. They say no smoking, including secondhand smoke for at least one hour prior to the breath test. Because again, keep in mind, they're measuring gas coming from your lungs. So that is the merit behind that. No sleeping or vigorous exercise at least one hour before the, the test or during the breath test. So um, again, I woke up at eight o'clock. You might think like, oh, what am I going to do for the whole hour? You wake up, you can shower. Again, you can brush your teeth with water or use a tongue scraper with water only to get some of the funk off of your teeth. Um, I packed up my lunch for later today and all my things for work, came here, like got dressed. By the time I got to work and I live very close to my office, I killed an hour. So 
no problem. I am choosing to do my breath test at my office because A, I have that ability to do so being my office, but also I have four and a half year old at home and I just know that she would be all up in my grill if I did not do this here. So I need privacy to come do this in the office. Um, and then they also make a point of saying, wait at least 14 days before beginning your breath test if you recently had antibiotic therapy, runny diarrhea, colonoscopies, barium studies, or enemas. So here's what I would say, because there's a lot of questions about this. The question always is, what about antimicrobial herbs? Um, now, I'm not a big advocate of repeat SIBO breath testing necessarily for check-in purposes. I'll do a video on that another time. But what I would say is that if you were on herbs that were specifically chosen to be antimicrobial. So for example, if you have SIBO, you know you have SIBO and you know, or dysbiosis and you're taking oregano or berberine or neem or something strong and with the intention of killing stuff, I would wait at least a couple of days, maybe a full week if you really want to be better safe than sorry. But if you think about it, a lot of times SIBO relapses within a couple of days of going off antimicrobials. So I think even a couple of days would probably suffice. If you had just come off of a course of Zyfaxin or Neomycin or whatever the case may be for SIBO, then that's strong enough that I would wait the full 14 days. But if you're doing antimicrobial herbs, my opinion is wait at least, you know, probably four days would probably be adequate for most people. If you really want to be safe, then wait a full week. And if you're on herbs that were not chosen to be antimicrobial necessarily, like a blend, like a Chinese herbal blend, for example, but they have some ability to be antimicrobial and they're not maybe as strongly formulated for that purpose, then going off of them for a period of a couple of days ought to do the trick also. Um, all right, I think that is about it. Um, again, prep diet, I've been drinking water. I'm not a coffee person. I do herbal teas, but that's about it. Um, and then the, um, the second 12 hours of the prep, you're just doing water. Um, oh, it's worth noting with tea, I think, is that tea, depending on what kind you do. So you'll want to do actual tea where you're steeping the leaves in water. And this can be herbal teas. I wouldn't do anything like matcha where it's just the ground up powder and you're actually consuming that powder because then you might be getting a little bit more of a prebiotic for your microbiota. So I would probably keep it with like clear, clear strained teas um, or plain coffee or plain water for the fluids. So that is all of your prep. Then let's unpack this kit. We'll do that next. They have couple of warnings right here on the front. Don't put your finger in the tube holder. You know somebody's done that before. You know that they put that there for a reason. Um, that's just fantastic. It's like when you read on the shampoo bottle, wash, lather, rinse, repeat, and you know somebody's gone through a whole bottle of shampoo. Let's see if I'll put this bad boy up. Got our glucose packet, some uh, labels. Here we go. Here's the money maker. These are the vacuum sealed tubes. This is why they say don't put your finger in the tubes because they're vacuum sealed and you're going to ruin it if you stick your finger where it doesn't belong. Oh my gosh, the jokes that could ensue from all of this is hysterical. Let's see. Got me a pen. Let's see. The kit should contain the easy sampler, do picky in here, 10 vacuum sealed tubes, check labels for the collection tubes, and your sugar solution. This is a three hour test. You're collecting every 20 minutes, and please schedule your time accordingly. I did. All right, they remind you about the prep. All right, now here's a little teeny bit of math, but not. Um, not a big deal to I, to prepare your test solution. They give you this nice little packet of glucose. In this case, I'm doing a glucose test, not lactose. And they give you a nice little chart that says, if you are 165 pounds or more, you just drink the whole thing. 
if you are 164 pounds or less. Um, they give you this nice little chart. So if you are a tiny human, then you need to do a little math. For me, I'm six feet tall and about a buck 80. So I'm drinking the whole thing. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is so much sugar. Oh, I'm just going to try to. Oh gosh. Yeah, that's too much. I'm going to be diabetic after this. Oh, no. Glucose testing is contraindicated if you are a diabetic. So, do not, um, it's not worth effing up your blood sugar for the SIBO test. Just do lactulose instead. Um, but for me, Lord, this is going to be one nasty sugary solution, but we'll find out. I'm just going to remember my youth and choose to think of it as a Capri Sun because, man, I had a lot of those when I was a kid. All right, next. So I've got to collect my baseline sample before I drink this. So I mixed it up and I'm putting it over there, not to be touched quite yet. So I need to hold the easy sampler device in one hand and the collection tube in the other. Okay. So this is the easy sampler. So I, from what I gather, what's going to happen is I'm going to breathe in. It's going to fill up this bag. There is a hole in the bag, so it'll eventually deflate. And then I'm going to stick the vacuum seal doodad, the tube, into here, and it's going to do the collection. So let's find out. I'll open up a couple of these guys, too. Okay, I'm going to hold the easy sampler. You will only exhale once per sample collection. Okay, duly noted. Take a normal, not a deep breath, a normal breath. Close your mouth around the mouthpiece and blow out normally. Um, let's see, exhale once. As you exhale, the bag fills with air. Keep it inflated. There is a small hole in the bag. This is intentional. I'm just literally reading to you. Um, during your exhalation, insert the test tube into the needle holder completely so the stopper on the tube is punctured. So that's what you're looking at here. So I'm going to fill up the bag, breathe into it, fill up the bag, and then once it's full, I'm going to put the collection tube in. Remove the tube after one to two seconds. Keep the bag inflated until after the tube is removed from the tube holder. Okay, let's see. This is my first one. This um, is frankly a teeny bit intimidating. I hope I don't mess it up. All right, so I'm going to exhale, fill the bag up. Pop this bad boy in for one to two seconds, and then remove, and then this bag can deflate. So, and they specifically say not to take a deep breath. So that's going to be the thing that takes a little bit of mental power, because I'm very tempted to just do a big old deep breath. But, uh, all right, I'm going to try to breathe as normally as I can. Hopefully I did it right. Now, I think I'll take just a slightly bigger breath next time. Um, I, I was really trying to not take a gigantic breath. So I, I made an effort to kind of center myself beforehand. And I feel like the bag didn't fill up as much as I anticipated. I hope I did it right. I'm going to find out. Anyway, I'm going to label that tube momentarily, but first I'm going to drink this glucose solution. So right after you get your baseline, then you can have your glucose solution, and then you wait another 20 minutes to collect your next tube. So cheers. I will give you feedback on what this tastes like. Oh, that is so sugary. Oh. 
mean, don't get me wrong, it's kind of delicious, but man. I can literally feel the diabetes set again. Oh my god. Oh, oh, this. Oh gosh. Oh. Definitely not a Capri Sun. I don't know how to describe it other than it's just pure sugar. And it's, yeah, other than just pure sugar water, it's, I imagine this is what hummingbirds drink, actually, when you, when you bake the, the sugar water solution for them and put a little bit of red coloring in it. I imagine this is what hummingbirds experience. Oof. Okay. Oof. Man, I need to rinse out my mouth after that. It was intense. That was intense. Of course, did you see the size of the bag? I mean, I think they gave me half a ton of sugar just about, so. Oof. Okay. Next up, I am going to label the vial that I just did. And now I wait 20 minutes and I'm going to collect my next tube and um, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll tune in at that point, but I'm just going to get work done at my computer in between, um, in between tubes and I'll do another couple of videos as I collect more tubes. All right, y'all, I just finished the glucose breath test and woo -hoo, it was unexpectedly rough at the end for me anyway. I think the collection all went totally fine. Um, the tubes got easier to collect once I kind of got the protocol down. I got it. I think I got adequate amounts of gas in each of the tubes. I did it all in time, filled out the little papers. Everything went smoothly. But literally two minutes before my last collection, I started feeling really hypoglycemic. I think all of that glucose just hit me like a ton of bricks and then sent me crashing. So at the very, very tail end, right before my last one, I started getting shaky. My hands are still a little bit shaky, actually. Um, shaky and woozy and lightheaded. I'm sweating bullets. I had to take off my fleece, which is really atypical for me. Usually I'm cold, if anything, and uh, just feeling really like, really yuck. So I'm going to eat a little bit more food and I'm gonna keep recovering from the hypoglycemia but that is definitely a pro tip. If you are taking a glucose test, this won't happen with lactulose, side note. If you're taking a glucose test and you're at all prone to hypoglycemia, be aware that this could happen and it could send you on a crash. So have some protein and some fat and some uh, balanced snacks or a meal ready to go when you're done. But otherwise, the test went smoothly. I'm gonna send this bad boy in and see what the results say.